ahead with that. Um, we're asked, this is the same differential equation, let me emphasize, y cubed minus 4y squared plus 5y minus 2. We're asked to sketch the other solutions. We're going to label the equilibrium solutions as stable, uh, semi-stable or unstable. And then we're going to describe what ranges of values for an initial condition would lead to what limiting behavior for the solution. So, in order to understand that, let me uh, redraw my phase plane for you. Remember, we factored this down into y minus 1 squared times y minus 2. And so when we graph that, we're graphing y prime versus y. That's the phase plane there. We had roots at y equals 1 and y equals 2. And then we had a curve that just goes up and just barely touches at y equals 1. And then it goes back down again. And then it goes up through y equals 2. And we've got to translate that into a graph of solutions in terms of y and t. So remember, when you're graphing the solutions, y is the vertical axis. When you're graphing the phase plane analysis, y is the horizontal axis. So that's always a little confusing, but you want to be very clear to keep track of which graph is which and don't mix them up. So here, I'm going to start by graphing y equals 1 and y equals 2. And those correspond to equilibrium solutions. Those are places where y prime is equal to 0. So I'll graph a couple of horizontal lines there. Those were my two equilibrium solutions. And then I want to figure out what the other solutions do. So I'll go back and look at the phase plane analysis. If I look down here, when y is less than 1, I see that y prime is less than 0, because the curve is down here below the axis. Um, when y is between 1 and 2, I still see that y prime is less than 0. And then when y is bigger than 2, I see that y prime is greater than 0. So I'm going to use that to draw my solution curves. When y is less than 1, I have solution curves that slope downwards. So I'll draw these curves sloping downwards. When y is between 1 and 2, I still have y prime less than 0, so I'm going to draw my curves still sloping downwards, leveling off when they get to the equilibrium solutions. And when y is bigger than 2 up in this region, that corresponds to this region here, I see that y prime is positive, so I'm going to draw my solution curves positive. So on the strength of that, having drawn these other solution curves, I can label which of my equilibrium solutions are stable or unstable or semi-stable. So if I look at y prime to start with, or sorry, y equals 1 to start with, that's this solution curve here, I see that if it got bumped a little bit, if it got bumped a little bit down, then the solution curves would go far away. If it got bumped a little bit up, then the solution curves would come back and approach the y equals 1 again. So what I have there is that y equals 1 is semi-stable. It depends on which direction you bump it. It's a semi-stable equilibrium. y equals 1 is a semi-stable equilibrium because if you bump it a little bit down, then the solutions run far away. But if you bump it far up, a little bit up, then the solutions come back to down to y equals 1. y equals 2, if I'm on that solution, that equilibrium solution, and I get bumped a little bit, it's going to go far away. And that's true in either direction. It's going to go far away. So y equals 2 is an unstable equilibrium because even the slightest bump will send you to a solution curve that goes far away from the equilibrium solution. 
So even though it's an equilibrium solution, it's unstable. You would not expect to see it happen in real life because any slight perturbation will take the solutions far away from that. So what we've done is identified our two, um, our two equilibrium solutions. One was semi-stable and one was unstable. We didn't have any stable equilibria there. And finally, the uh, question prompt asked us to identify which ranges of initial values would lead to which limiting behavior for the solution. So let's go back and look at our solution curves. We see that if we're in this region, that's if y is less than, if, uh, if, if, if y0, if we start at a point where y0 is less than 1, then these solution curves go down to negative infinity. So y goes to, as t goes to infinity, as t grows, the y is trending downwards to negative infinity. If we start uh, at 1, then we're just going to stay at 1. And if we start anywhere in between 1 and 2, then we're going to drift down to 1. So I'll say if y, if our initial value of y is 1 or anything between 1 and 2, then y of large values will tend down towards the solution at 1. If we start at 2, if y naught, the initial value of y, is 2, then we'll stay exactly on that solution. It would be unstable, so uh, in the real world you wouldn't expect to see this happen, but we would see for large values of time, we would still see y right there on that equilibrium solution. And if we start anywhere up here, if y0 is anything bigger than 2, then we see that the solution curves go up to infinity. So as we plug in larger and larger values for t, we see that y would increase up to infinity. So now we've identified all the possible things that could happen depending on which values of y naught you start at. We can tell you where the ultimate behavior will be for any given value of y naught. So let me just recap what we did there. We started with the differential equation. We had to do a lot of algebra back in the previous example to factor it down into y minus 1 squared to, times y minus 2. Once we had that, we drew this phase plane analysis where we drew the graph of y prime versus y. So we were graphing a polynomial there. Of course, you can check that on your calculator. And from there, we were able to identify the equilibrium solutions at y equals 1 and y equals 2. And then we tr those translated into our equilibrium solutions over here, y equals 1 and y equals 2. That's how we got these two horizontal lines here. Uh, looking at it in a little more detail, we see that y is negative, uh, sorry, y prime is negative when y is less than 1, y prime is negative when y is between 1 and 2, and y prime is positive when y is bigger than 2. So that helped us draw these uh, solution curves uh, sloping downhill when y is less than 1, still sloping downhill when y is between 1 and 2, and then sloping uphill when y is bigger than 2. So we're able to draw these solution curves, and then we can look at those and identify which of our equilibria are stable or unstable. Turned out that y equals 1 was semi-stable because solution curves sort of approach it on one side, on one side, they want to tend towards that solution. On the other side, they run away from that solution. So it's stable on one side, unstable on the other side. We call it semi-stable. Y equals 2 was an unstable e equilibrium because the solution curves are drifting away from it. 
course, we could have also noticed that by looking at the original phase plane graph, since at y equals 2, the graph is, the curve is going upwards across the horizontal axis. We know that's an unstable equilibrium. And at y equals 1, since it's just barely touching its tangent to the horizontal axis, we know that's a semi-stable equilibrium. And finally, we were able to look at these solution curves and identify for any possible value of y naught, whether it be less than 1, between 1 and 2, equal to 2, or, oh, there's a small mistake here. I should have said y naught greater than 2. That corresponds to these values here, where y naught is greater than 2. Uh, so we were able to look at those and identify for any possible range um, where the solution curves will end up. If you're less than 1, you're going to be going down to negative infinity. If you're between 1 and 2, you're going to be forced down to this solution at y equals 1. If you're at 2, then you're just going to keep going exactly at y equals 2. But if you're anything bigger than 2, then you're going to be going up to positive infinity. So the whole point of this um, study of autonomous equations and phase plane analysis is that nowhere in any of this did we actually solve the differential equations. Instead, we had this autonomous equation where we had no x's or t's on the right-hand side, just y's. And so from that, we were able to produce a graph of y prime versus y. And from there, we were able to really get a lot of information about the actual solutions, uh, y versus t. We're able to figure out the equilibrium solutions, whether they're stable or unstable, where the other solutions go, and where you would go from any initial point. So I hope you'll have fun practicing some of those on your own. That wraps up this lecture on autonomous equations, and this is part of the Differential Equations lecture series. My name is Will Murray, and you're watching Educator.com. Thanks.